The munro kelly hypothesis is a model that we can use to describe intracranial dynamics and their effects on intracranial pressure, or ICP. That's a complicated way of saying that it's a tool to look at the way that different elements contained within the skull interact with each other and the effects they have on pressure within the skull. We'll start by looking at the skull. In this case, we're looking at it from directly above. If we were to take the top off the skull, we would of course find the brain contained within it and the brain takes up the vast majority of the room inside the skull. However, also contained within the skull, we would find cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. C CSF is a fluid that bathes the brain and acts as a buffer to protect it. Without it, our brains would crash into the insides of our skull every time we moved our head. The final component is the blood that flows through the brain, delivering oxygen and other essentials. That gives us our three components, the brain itself, CSF and blood. Using the Wonder, such as animation software, we can divide them into their separate components to make them easier to study. These three components are all packed inside the skull, and because they're packed in fairly tightly, they're always under a certain amount of pressure. This bar shows the pressure inside the skull. Normal pressure inside the brain is somewhere between 5 to 15 millimetres of mercury. This level of pressure is safe and does not cause any damage. However, if something happens that causes one of the three components, the brain, the CSF or the blood, to increase in volume, then pressure inside the skull will start to increase. This is essentially what the Mun Munro kelly hypothesis is, a tool to examine changes in pressure inside the skull. For example, if we suffer a bang to the head, a potential side effect could be that the brain will begin to swell. As it swells, it will quickly fill the limited available space and begin to apply pressure to the blood and the CSF. The pressure inside the skull will begin to increase. The body can compensate for this to an extent. As pressure increases, some of the blood inside the skull will get pushed down into the body. This will create some space for the brain to swell into and help to reduce pressure slightly. However, if the brain continues to swell, then the pressure will soon begin to rise again. If pressure rises above 20 millimetres of mercury, then it begins to become dangerous. Brain cells will start to become squashed and damaged. The worst case scenario is that pressure becomes so high that the brain stem, a structure essential for such tasks as breathing and maintaining a heart rate, is crushed, resulting in irreversible brain death. Obviously, we need to intervene before this happens. One possible solution could be to drain away some of the CSF. A surgeon can insert a drain straight into the ventricles. Reducing the volume of CSF will give the brain space to swell into, hopefully reducing pressures back to within safe limits.